Hi, right, it's me, your girlfriend slash day friend slash boyfriend's favorite content creator. We're going to talk about Mark Kerr. That's why you can tell my energy level isn't that high because with all of this shit happening with the Gamergate 2.0 and the, did I want to talk about DEI and ESG? He's at the center of this idiot storm. It's a stupid storm. It's a it's dumb weather, you might want to call it. Whatever you want to say. He is smack dab in the middle of it because that's what he wants to be, right? So I had this guy blocked on Twitter, but I just kept seeing his dumb shit. And my brain was like, you gotta talk about it or it's going to, you know, really impact your day. So I was like, okay, you know, let's just, let's just get it out there. So this is me just getting it out so I can just ignore him for, for the rest of forever. But holy shit, why do you guys follow this guy? He is never correct about anything. He He's a grifter. He's, he's pivoted so hard to the right that I think he snapped his ankles, which is also probably why he doesn't show what he looks like. But I cannot believe you guys take anything this man says seriously, like at all. He has no validity to his statements. It's just random shit he says. And he went, oh, well, actually, that makes sense. But there's no backup. And like the evidence they provide is so obviously just like either out of context or like clearly a joke, but it has to be little for him in order for him to keep up this this whole charade. But first, let's go over a little bit of Mark's history in case you guys don't know who he is. Mark Edward Kern is a former video game executive. He worked for Blizzard from 97, 2005. Then he co-created um, or he co-founded Red 5 Studios and they're gonna make a game called Firefall. And if you haven't heard of Firefall, that's because the game never came out. I, it's me, editor, editor guy and i made a mistake and i like to clear my mistakes you know so firefall did in fact come out it just it did it just didn't do well it didn't come out to really good reviews it was free to play but most reviews i'm seeing said the game was kind of bad actually uh, but it did come out it, it came out uh, fully in 2015 and it was done by 2017. it was done um, a lot of bad shit happened uh, Red Five Studios ran out of money. There was no funding for people who were working there. Like people got fired. It was it was all bad. But the game did in fact come out. So in the video, you're gonna hear me talk about like why Maker's Pro is a successor to a game that didn't come out, but it did in fact come out. Once again, it just was poorly received because of Mark and his overspending. But we'll we'll get to that. They also say, you know, he has been live and oh, he's been around in online activism like the SOPA Act and support of Gamergate. Ooh, what was, what was Gamergate? Was a loosely organized misogynistic online harassment campaign and a right wing backlash against feminism, diversity and progressivism in video game culture. It was conducted using the hashtag Gamergate primarily in 2014 and 2015. I was there. That's accurate. That's what it was. And then he went to law school, yada, 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 yada. Uh, so he joined Blizzard in 97. He helped, what, produce Diablo 2 and was teaming for World, for World of Warcraft. Good job. Then he left in 2005. So it hasn't been associated with Blizzard since 2005. Also in the same year, he started Red 5 Studios and became the CEO in 2008. Okay, cool. All right. So this guy is working in the game industry. He is a CEO. He has a game called, oh, he had to get a Firefly, but it doesn't matter because, you know, he's still a CEO of a company. He's still, oh, wait, I didn't see the next part. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> Kern faced allegations of overspending on promotional campaigns for Firefall. Notably, he devised a marketing strategy involving Firefall's themed sports bus. Ugh. Notably, he devised a marketing strategy involving a Firefall themed Esports bus intended as both a mobile promotional tool and a server for LAN competitions during the game's beta phase. The project, estimated at $3 million, also included the establishment of a dedicated video production team with costly equipment. Red 5 employees described Kern as being prone to extended absences and having an erratic, impulsive, and very disruptive leadership style. 2013, Kern was removed from position CEO by the Red 5 board of directors. He referred to his time as company as own Kobayashi Maru. That is just Star Trek talk for, he said the situation was bad and he was doing the best he could, but he was always going to fail. All right. And then in 2014, he founded Studio Meek Entertainment. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, oh, new project seeding for an archive of, uh-huh, virtual MMO. The project is not dead. In 2019, current sought crowdfunding for Ember, 
a spiritual successor to Firefox. Real quick, um, how do you have a spiritual su successor to a game that never came out? Like, that's like having a sequel to a movie that never was released. I don't understand that. But okay. And then we get to the current day stuff, right? We were just talking about his support for Gamergate. I think out of all of this so far, the only cool thing he did was like boycott Blizzard, but that's because of uh, he wanted to revive Vanilla Surfers. <laughs> and the most relevant thing he did prior to the Gamergate 2.0 stuff is a tweet talking about the, uh, the UIs, which also got him roasted. So that's Mark Kern, a guy who was at one point working with Blizzard and then stopped in 2008, started a company, got ousted from said company because he didn't know how to run the company and tried to get two games started and failed both of them. And now he's just this guy online, which brings us to Grums. Cause you see, Mark Kern is this guy, but Grums is the is the real money maker. Grums is the persona that he uses on Twitter. And when I say persona, I mean that because he literally uses like an anime-like figure avatar to uh converse with people, whether it's on streams or you know on YouTube videos. So Grums has become his whole identity. And let's just real quick, I'm gonna just do this here for you guys uh as i'm talking right now you're gonna see a lot of tweets from grums i would say <clears throat> over 90 percent of those tweets are just him trying to squeeze relevancy out of everything he just says shit for attention that's it some of the tweets were talking about the earthquake in taiwan which sucks like i'm not gonna like yeah earthquakes are good and people got hurt like that's not good but the vast majority of what he says is just it's 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 such made up bullshit that if you even took half a second to fact check it, you realize how wrong he is all the time. You don't believe me? We're gonna do this twice. Grums, do you see a way to get out of this? Like, what, what like, does it take? It, it's gonna take a, a a cycle or two because games take a lot longer. You're, you know, I said in movies right now, you're starting starting to see the economic repercussions of this, right? And it, I think in games, it, it's happening slower for two reasons. One is games take longer to make. It takes seven years to do an original IP game now from scratch. Uh, you know, and the other reason is, is that it's really the story components that are the most infected. You know, not the gameplay, uh, not the programming teams. It's really the writing and story component. And that's not like in a movie where it's like 100% of what you do or the vast majority of what you do is storytelling. That's a, um, a component of a video game. And so I think that's why it's slower in games, uh, but it's gonna get worse before it gets better. They're circling the wagons right now. They're doubling down and it's getting worse internally for teams right now. Are we looking at uh, five years, eight years? I mean, are I we gonna be- you're looking, you're looking at like two cycles. So that's gonna be, I mean, these games are already in production. So I think you're looking at four years, three to four years maybe a little longer it depends before you see any sort of economic impact here that would force change uh maybe you know because uh, these games are already funded so it doesn't matter that esg is drying up and all that stuff these games are funded you're gonna see the stuff come out uh it, luckily it's gonna be mostly just on the story end you know it's not gonna uh the gameplay stuff AAA has a different problem they have a problem with lack of innovation and churning out the same stuff and um and playing it way too safe but uh but you're mostly gonna see it on the story side and it's going to be a, a long time, unfortunately. That's honestly so disheartening to hear. It's so well, disheartening to hear. It, okay, it is, but it isn't because the majority of devs don't care. They're they're not in they're not into this politics stuff. It's really a handful of activists that came up through DEI programs. Like that's how they got in, right? And it's from it's from the funding at the top down level. The funding's drying up, uh, and layoffs are happening, and you know only the most productive are going to stick around when when times are tough in the gaming industry so most of these activists uh do more talking than they do developing uh, so hopefully that gets weeded out and the culture comes back i'm heartened by the fact that in gdc there's a huge number of great topics out there that are high information and so yeah i think game devs aren't having it uh they're just keeping their heads down right now and we're just we just gotta wait so a couple of things um he keeps talking about the ESG funding. He likes to keep throwing that in there. Now, the reason why he's doing it is obvious. It's it's a buzzword. It's a word that he knows would get his audience queued up, right? But if you look into ESG, 
uh, you'll realize that the game that they're talking about isn't video games. This is ESG. This is from the American Gaming Association. The gaming industry's commitment to ESG. So you're thinking, oh, video games, video games, right? No. ESG also stands for environmental, social, and governance. So that, that's, that's, that's what that means. Defining ESG for gaming. As an evolution of traditional CSR, ESG adds critical accountability through transparent measurement, monitoring, reporting, which are fast becoming the norm with formalized standards and expectations. Gaming industry stakeholders are looking at our industry's performance on these issues and holding us accountable for progress. The efforts capture how AGA members are prioritizing work on several key issues that are most material to gaming businesses and important to stakeholders. And they go for like carbon footprints, reducing resource consumption, uh, increasing uh, board and manager diversity of race, gender, and ethnicity. And I know you got to think back, aha, but that's it. That's what he's talking about. That's, but stay with me here. Look at the member company profiles. Do you see, do you see like EA? No. Do you see Microsoft, Sony? Nintendo, do you see any actual gaming companies? No. You know what you do see? FanDuel, DraftKings, AGS, Wind Resorts. Because MGM Resorts, this is for gambling. Gaming isn't just video games. It's also gambling. ESG is not used for video games. Because why would there be? How would that work? That's why even the clip is like, oh, well, you know, the games are already funded. So this, 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 and that. Yeah, the games are already funded by their funding sources, not ESG. But again, he can just say these things because he knows these are the, the, the key buzzwords to get people going. Just drop in ESG. And then him talking about how these people were brought up through DEI. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He hasn't been part of the game industry since fucking 2014. He has not had a successful game on his own. He was a part of Blizzard, and that was the only success he had. He has no idea what's going on in these uh, writing rooms. He doesn't know what's going on in these uh, who gets hired. He has no idea for any of these things. Like, at all. In fact, one of his tweets, he's trying to talk about Ash Parrish saying that she worked for IGN. She has never worked for IGN. He doesn't know shit, like, at all, but he doesn't need to. That's the whole thing of being a conservative grifter, or just, at this point, just a rampant right-wing conservative. You don't have to say anything that has any sort of very viable truth. All you have to do is speak, and that's it. You speak, and you say things that might potentially somewhere, if you really squint and twist it, sound true, and that's it. That's fucking it. What do you mean ESG? Is it? Provide evidence. They never provide evidence, which brings me to my second point. And that's where we're going to break point by point, because holy shit. All right, this one's going to be a little more retention, but it's, it's, it's related. I, I trust you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Okay. So, Grumps tweets out and says, Bellio covers the Kotaku shift to gaming guides, carefully sized as mentioning any of the current controversy, lauds Kotaku journalism, link below. Here's the video. Bellio Gaming replies, what the fuck are you on about, Mark? We're criticizing what VCs, which are venture capitalists, are up to. The stuff that led to the likes of Second Wind. I mean, he he might just say Second Wind. Come on, uh, existing. And so then we're gonna, I'm gonna just follow this this back. And then Grums replies, "It's accurate. You sidestepped around Kotaku's recent controversies. That was a huge factor to Geo Media's decision to switch to gaming guys. The topic of your video. He has no proof of this." He has no proof of any of this at all. Now, without even reading the rest of it, I could tell you that the more logical conclusion is that Geo Media was looking to maximize SEO and they saw guys as the way to do that and they want to shift there because venture capitalists, investors don't know what makes shit works. They look at things as what can make me the most money. Okay. I have right now a more reasonable take of what's happening than the most recent controversy which was the sweet baby incident, which my God, we will get to again, unfortunately, but let's continue. The second traffic 
article on Kotaku was the hit piece on a hit piece, okay, on the dude who started the Super Ink Detective uh, that lit a firestorm that everyone on the internet and gaming journalism seems to have noticed but you. The senior editor used this fact to help keep Kotaku focused on gaming articles a little longer and delayed the guide shift. So that, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense right there. How could they use this to stay on gaming to delay the guide shift when this was supposedly the controversy that turned them to guides to the first place? Like, do you see how it doesn't make any sense? Many people feel, including your own very busy comment section, that the his, this hate piece article precipitated the demise of Kotaku. People's feelings don't matter about facts. Isn't that what your site always talks about? Something about facts, not caring about feelings. Also relevant to your video. These are all topics highly relevant to your video, but you never talked about them and instead spent the first half video talking about why Kotaku journalism was good and important and worth saving. I thought my comment on reposting your video was pretty neutral and sums up my opinion in a very mild manner. That's not neutral. You, <laughs> oh my God. Seems you want to expand clarification. Here it is. Next time you could tag me and I can see your questions soon. Side note, I hate when they start Sephiroth posting, when they start going these long things, like you could have just got to the point, bro. Like, anyways, and here's someone actually works for Kotaku saying you have no concept of why Geo attempted to focus on guides. Attempted, meaning hasn't done. You could not be more inaccurate with this statement, but it's not surprising this is what you do, craft your own reality. And now I know who Alyssa is. I know if I click on this, I know it's gonna be a bunch of people in the comments that you've been like, but you should have da, 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 da. So no point in going there. Sorry if I'm talking quickly, I'm very annoyed. Uh, and so Michael responds, from what I'd understood of unit econs of sites like that, guides is a drive to essentially be an SEO farm. Oh, I agree with the story, mostly because I was frustrated at my search results being full of keywords, stuffed guide trash, and geo mandating that. It's still a pattern with gamers and the escapist YouTube team. I do see though that if there is a void, people will assume information to fill it. We'll make thoughts on ESG clear in future videos too, like a tomorrow. TLDR, a load of wink, probably to make funds look enticing to institutional investors such as pension funds, etc. And then Mark just goes on a completely different thing. I think guys do drive fact traffic, but also on YouTube. Search itself is moving to AI and it's going to direct SEO. So nothing. As far as how ESG influences gaming, my knowledge is that the C minus level, which devs never get to see. I have an upcoming threat now. That's it's just it's. But do you see how that petered out? Do you see when he was told he was wrong about something? He's just like, ah, well, you know, I'm just going to quick pivot like. <laughs> and again, he made all this shit up, all of it. All right, here it fucking is. South of Midnight story team bullied by Sweet Baby Ink question mark. More to this compulsion game story, it seems. If anyone has more info about this, my DMs are open. So immediately, right with the incendiary bullied, capitalized, and Sweet Baby Ink question mark. And then he follows up saying he has no fucking idea what's happening. So if you have more info, uh, my DMs are open. This was 11 hours ago. Let's click on the April 3rd one. Update. More ex developers come forth from Sweet Paper Ink Project South of Midnight by Compulsion Games. The community manager is still protected after saying she hates gamers. We, we'll get to that because that was just, it was, it was a dumb tweet. It was just, uh, uh, main character was race swapped in order to better reflect a tail set, tail set in Deep South after Microsoft and SBI involvement. Okay, so right there and there. Where is this information coming from? Right? Like, where is it coming from? Who, where, where is, where is any of this verified? Oh, he has pictures of it. Okay, cool. So the pictures will show exactly who race swapped. Oh yeah. It looks like a character model just got changed. Cause that never happens in gaming. That never happens in gaming. Character models never change. People stay at the same models all the way through. Uh, the team that created their past celebrated title, We Happy Few, We Happy Few did not do well, I don't want to say celebrate it, is mostly gone, leaving after being disillusioned about changes after Xbox, Microsoft, SBI involvement, studio politics, and more. Again, where is the proof of this? Because I looked this up, I found nothing of us from Compulsion Games. 
less than 10% of the original we have a few team remains. People leave companies all the time or get fired. Uh, promotion of non-qualified staff to lead in management positions resulted in Messer Project. No idea how to make a game. Hmm. Irony coming from Mark Kern. The dev team is almost entirely white and based in Montreal, Canada, and many devs felt uncomfortable creating a game in Deep South with so little experience in the area. Almost would be pretty beneficial to then have a consulting company who could keep you on the right track thing, wouldn't it? Lots of conflicting things happening here. I'm starting to see here. Super Inc. and A. Ooh, one. A POC writer brought on board to help more authentic perspective. Which is, is that a bad thing? Like, the gamer hating community manager. Okay, you wanna know what the gamer hating, you wanna know what the gamer hating is? So I looked it up, okay? She made a tweet where she wrote, I hate gamers, TM. That's it. That's, that's, that's a tweet. That's it. I hate gamers, trademark. This, by the way, this is the website that he's referencing, by the way. It's that park place. You know, the same website that did that thing against black girl gamers? Yeah, that same website. And this is the fucking tweet. This is it. This is the tweet. That's it. That's the tweet. That's that's the tweet. That's the tweet. But that's that's it. The compulsion games. Oh, what's the pin tweet? The game South of Midnight from uh, June 11th. Here's the thing. I don't know if you know this, Mark. You only push uh, promotional materials for something when there's a fucking release date. There's no release date for this game. There's, there's no release date. What would you be? You know Hellblade 2? Singing was, uh, you know, that series, Singing was Sacrifice series? Hellblade 2? Also didn't have very much promotional material. But now they're ramping up because the game's going to come out soon. Your favorite game, Stellar Blade, it was announced. And then when it got closer to release date, it had more and more information. That's how games, that's how game promotion works. If you don't have anything to promote, what the fuck else, what, what do you want them to do? They still want to have social engagement. So they're going to be retweeting and supporting the industry that they're in. That's the, that's this guy's whole thing. That's his whole thing, right? He takes things that are either non-issue or so insular that no one would give a shit and makes it seem like it's the biggest thing in the world. Talking about how Kotaku's going down because of a fucking contra the controversy surrounding a fucking curator no one even knows. That no one talks about. And their obsession with Sweet Baby Inc. They have no idea what a consulting company does. A consulting company cannot strong arm you into changing your vision. You consult with them and then you decide. It is the most basic of things to understand. It is in the word consultation. There is no contract that says you have to use this consulting company and whatever they say, you gotta do it. But for him to talk about how there's a white development team trying to do a game based on different culture and then highlighting as if being people who might have more experience with that culture on as a bad thing because he sees diversity in all its forms as a bad thing he doesn't like diversity he thinks it's ruining games even though we've gotten some of the best gamings i've had to offer within the last decade because of things like diversity because like i've always said diversity isn't just Hey, have a black person there. There's diversity in experience and backgrounds in uh, languages, cultures, body types. He's fucking gooning over Stella Blade like no one else's business. Guess what? If it wasn't for diversity, those body types wouldn't be allowed in gaming, right? Because we all just have one body type. You don't even, like, these people don't even understand what they're arguing against. They don't. They want to talk about like gaming is getting bad. In that same video earlier I played for you guys, he did touch upon one key point. It's yeah, AAA developers are getting more risk adverse. So we're going to see more safer same games. And that has to do because of capitalism. Because people are looking at the bottom line and not looking at the actual creative's input inside of gaming. They don't care about like necessarily the quality of the game so much they get their return on investment. That's what's the problem is. I did a whole video about that. But... To try to make it seem like it's happening on such an individual level is insane. 
And this is the guy who worked in the industry. And now he's he's all an outsider now, and he's making all these assumptions. He has no proof of anything. And the closest he does get to proof is a tweet that was like, I hate gamers TM trademark. Like, holy shit. What about the stuff on your own Twitter page? The fact that you are clearly transphobic, the fact that you hate diversity, the fact that you specifically seem to have a pension going after black women or just women in general, your obsession with a certain Kotaku editor. Like, what about all those things, Grums? The fact that you consistently have to hide your face behind a avatar to project this bullshit. Like, what about that? What is, what is that telling you? What is that telling anyone here? This is an unserious man who is just doing this for attention. Stuff that he tweets about is some of the most inane shit. A studio losing employees is not worth covering unless the reason why is because of, you know, mismanager or whatever, or abuse and mistreatment. He just says that like 10% of uh, the original We Happy Few team is left. Okay, do you want to get into why that's the case? No, because he doesn't know why. He never knows the why of anything. He makes assumptions. And people do the whole fallacy of, well, appeal to authority. Hey, he's a game developer. Yeah, he was in the game industry like a decade ago, over a decade ago at this point, because he had got ousted from a CEO position and he has yet to do anything. So Mark, if you see this video, I have a question for you. With all your insider knowledge, with, 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 with all of your experience, why aren't people hiring you to make these games that you think gamers want? If you're saying the guy is so bad, where is your game? Where is the spiritual successor to Firefall? Where is Firefall? Where are any of these games? Why aren't you out there producing, making games you care so much? I mean, you have the experience. You even mentioned in that same video that I played earlier that game devs don't really give a shit. They're just keeping their head down. So clearly you could talk to those game developers, get some money going, you know, um, and it won't be ESG funded. So you don't have to worry about, you know, being PC and you can just make the game. You have the, the skill set to do so. I don't. I'm not a programmer. I never work in the gaming industry. I'm just a consumer. But you do. So instead of being on Twitter grifting, why don't you make a game and make the game that you think would be the game that all games should be? Why don't you do that? Instead of making bad April Fool's jokes, harassing someone. Also, also, um, to the people who might see this video and go like, well, why are you defending any data? Why is it okay for you guys to harass people? It's justifiable. But any perceived harassment towards you or the person that you like is bad. Why is that the case? Just rules for thee, not for me, or like what's going on there?